Greetings from the road. It's a beautiful Thursday afternoon. I'm here in Cottonwood, Idaho. And it's along Highway 95 that I picked up in Boise. I'm on my way to Moscow. And I stopped here to get some religious artifacts for my brother Joe in Sandpoint. And what a treat. I climbed up about three miles outside of town, a little town, about 900 people. And I have a, a kind person here who's gonna tell me what we're looking at. And I think it was constructed in 1920. 19, started in 1919. 1919. So what is this building that we're looking at? We're looking at the Monastery of St. Gertrude. They began it in 1919, finished it five years later in 1924. They quarried the stone, it's a blue porphyry stone, not found anywhere else in the United States, up on the hill. Working at times in the quarry themselves and bringing the stone down the hill in wheelbarrows with stonemasons putting it together. The walls are two feet thick, the towers go 100 feet into the air. And between the towers you'll see a statue of the Sacred Heart. And in the image of his heart are the names of the 12,000 donors who donated. I'm gonna zoom in on that. I won't be able to get that, but this is the statue that we're referring to. Now, what is the order? And this is what's interesting. Not only a typically, when you think of a monastery, you think of monks and you think of a male gender, but what is the order here on this monastery? They are Benedictine women. Women, okay, of the Benedictine order. And the patron saint here is St. Gertrude? Yes. And can you tell me a little bit about her? She is a 13th century mystic. Okay. So she saw Jesus in his teenage years. Okay. And what country was this in? Switzerland, I Switzerland. think. Switzerland. And was she formally beatified or was it an informal beatification? I believe it was informal. You know, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I was kind of reading about her on the internet, and so this whole thing is out of the out of the norm, if you will. How did they settle on a little town in Idaho to build this monastery? Well, first they were coming from Switzerland. Um, there was a Protestant Reformation going on in in the 1880s. So there was persecution. Well, yeah, uh, yes, for yeah, Catholics, right. they were a cloistered order, meaning when you go in, you never leave those walls again. Oh my goodness. But even though they were cloistered, they were worried that they may be kicked out. And so okay. they sent three sisters to America to establish a safe refuge. And first they went to Jervis, Oregon, 60 miles south of Portland. They were there two years, then went to Uniontown for 10 years, Uniontown, Washington, um, for about 10 years, outgrew their little convent, uh, moved three miles away to Colton, built St. Scholastica's Academy and convent. And in 10 years, it becomes too full. And at that point, they decide they shouldn't move again. They should split, be one order with two homes. So they did that. And there was a John and Gertrude Uhlenkot family here. They had two daughters who were sisters. They wanted them back. So they offered them 85 free acres if they would come here. Oh my goodness. So they did. And first they built a, a small little monastery over where the high school is now. Um, and and they, they built that in 1910, outgrew it. Nine years later, they began building this. And for 20 years, they have two convents. And then um, one of the founding sisters dies. And when she dies, um, they keep it going for five more years. It isn't going very well. They sell that place. They all come here, which makes this too small. At their height, they had 184 women living here. Oh my goodness. So they built the brick annex um, that you can see. And that's over here to the left. Uh -huh. It added 70 bedrooms. So if you look at how close those windows are, you can see those bedrooms are really quite small. They're more of a little dormitory room. Well, they're and you cells. Had, oh, little cells, <laughs> yeah. even smaller than that. And you mentioned, now over here, folks, we have a high school. And this is what's really interesting. Originally, this was a denominational high school, right? The sisters built this school. And this now it's a public high school. Right. In 1970, all of the schools on the prairie closed, or a lot of the schools on the prairie closed. Green Creek, Ferdinand, Cuterville, the Catholic school in Cottonwood. 
the Prairie School District had been formed when the high schools had been closed. So now the grade schools all closed, so they were going to be bused to Cottonwood, and Cottonwood didn't have the schools, uh, the buildings for the school. So the sisters closed St. Gertrude's Academy, sold that to the school district, and that has been the public high school ever since. So here we have a situation where an order of female nuns actually takes and helps construct something and gives it back to the community for it to become a non-denominational community asset, which is unusual, but especially given that it's a female order. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk here and we're gonna show you, we're elevated here. There's a statuary garden here that they have retreats twice a year in June and January, but they also offer bed and breakfast at a very reasonable price. And you can come here, spend anywhere from one night to several nights. The room rates start at 99 and they go to 129, I think. I was looking on the website so somewhere in there, which is very reasonable. So I'm gonna pan around here. So would you say this is a non-denominational retreat? A non-denominational, it's faith-based. Yes. Well. You're talking about the come to the quiet, right. where, where people come and they are totally silent for right. the whole time and meet with the spiritual director. But that's are, the retreats. The, but, but there are retreats every weekend. They okay. have yoga. They have painting. Really? They have living as a monk. I mean, their retreat schedule is full. That's a 22 bedroom retreat center. So the retreat center here, folks, just to clarify, twice a year in June and January, they have a week long retreat for come to the quiet come to the quiet, but then year round, they have other retreats every Correct. week, every weekend. And that includes accommodations where you can stay. Right. Okay. So I'm going to pan around here. This is just gorgeous. This is absolutely gorgeous. Is that a little shrine right there? The, the little tiny. It's our mailbox. Oh, that's your mailbox. <laughs> yes. It looks like a shrine. Boy, that's, yes. a, that's the neatest mailbox I've ever seen. So again, I'm going to pull back here. So you folks, I'm going to give you a link to go to this place. And I'll tell you, if you want a peaceful getaway, if you want a retreat, if you want a spiritual retreat in silence, if you want a weekend retreat, we're going to walk up here. I can't get enough of that view. And I'm going to show you, try to show you the elevated view that we have here. And again, we're less than five miles from Highway 95 in Idaho. Beautiful, beautiful northern Idaho. We're about, I don't know, 40, 50 miles south of Lewiston. We're about, what, about 220 miles north of Boise? Yeah, about Look at this. Are those sunflowers there in the distance? That's canola. Plants. Canola, for the canola oil. Yes. Okay. So again, go to the link. I didn't plan on coming here today. I never know how my day is gonna end. I'm directed by a higher power, let's just put it that way. But I'm so glad I took the time to come here. I didn't know I'd be doing this video. But if you're looking for peace, if you're looking for clarity, or maybe just a getaway, now, tell me the formal name of where we're at. Uh, the Center for Benedictine Life at the Monastery of St. Gertrude. Okay, and the easiest way for most people is to call. So what's your telephone number? Well, the museum is 208-962-2050. 2050. 2050. So you can start there by making a phone call. This is Freighter Jim. Remember, drive safe, arrive alive, take the two lane. You'll never know what you find. Have a great day.